And I'm back with more Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Last time, we were still at Gord Lake. We were talking to Lada and Larry, and we need to finish up our investigation before the next day of trial. So let's get on that. Um, something I do want to mention uh, about the length of episodes. A lot of it is just kind of guesswork, even more so than other episodes in other series. Because this doesn't have, like, definitive endpoints other than, oh, to be continued and, you know, recesses or whatever, things like that, I kind of have to make a judgment call based on what my spoiler guide is telling me, like, what a good halfway point is between in a conversation, especially for, like, investigative purposes, but in testimonies. Because there's no guarantee that a thing is going to be 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour. There's no, like, boss fight to this. But I have noticed in a couple of episodes, if they ran, like, 40, 45 minutes, my voice does take a bit of a hit. Though that could just be, you know, I was doing Wendy Oldbag or I was doing too much of The Judge or something. But as a general rule, I will try to keep it 20 to 30 minutes. If it starts looking like it's 15 or so, I'm already in the process of considering shortening an episode and having it. But again, I will look at my guide and it will kind of guide me to, can I do this in one 35-minute episode or 40-minute episode rather than two 20-minute ones um, to amplify the dramatic effect? It, it is kind of like wait and see. But the longer these go, like at this point, the, the uh, cases get longer and longer. The first few were very short, but now this is where the rubber meets the road, and most cases are going to go long. So I have to be smart with what I'm doing for my own sake, because this is a lot of text. Should be talking a lot, to be honest. Oh, there she is. Well, Mr. Lawyer, I got the info you needed. You got the scoop of Gordy yet? Lotta, there's no such thing as Gordy. What? How can you be so sure? You got some proof he don't exist? Of course I do. No lawyer with his badge would make a claim without backing it up. <laughs> we are talking Phoenix right here, you know. Take that. <laughs> there is air tank? What are y'all doing with an air tank? This is Gordy? Hmm. Uh, excuse me? There's a stand over there. A hot dog stand. There's a giant inflatable samurai doll. About a week ago, an idiot who happens to be a friend of mine tried to fill it. He used the air tank, and when the valve blew, the tank flew into the lake. Apparently, it made a loud bang. A bang?! The tank, along with the still deflated samurai, fell into the lake. At the same time, a couple was taking a photograph near the lake. Wait, so you're saying Gordy's the steel samurai? Well, that's a fine way to ruin a girl's dreams. I'm sorry. Nah, it's okay, you win. I'll give you your info like you promised. So tell us this information. Promise is a promise, I guess. 
I overheard the cops saying something about the witness tomorrow. They say he's the caretaker of the boat rental shop up there. Boat rental? Someone there? Looks so deserted. Just an old guy living by himself. Y'all should check it out. Well, thank you, Lada. Let's get cracking, Nick. Hold on! Something else? Yeah, the, the night of the murder. My camera clicked twice, you know. Wait, so you have another photo? Well, yeah, there's nothing on it. Just like the lake. Figured it'd be no use as vet in it, so I kept it as myself. May not be helpful, but uh, here you go. 11.50. Huh. Bye now. Y'all take care. Time for me to pack up and leave. It's all Larry's fault. Legend still lives on, I guess. Yeah, the legend of Larry. Familiar to all who knew him. When something smells, it's usually the butts. Someone should whip butts into shape. Maybe we get Ma uh, Mia on the case. Anyway... This is the boat shop they were talking about. You're right. Doesn't seem like anyone's around at all. Well, let's check it out anyway. Meg, is that you? Hey, is that key with you? Where have you two been? I've been worried sick. Nick, you handled this. I, I think I'll leave this one up to you, Maya. Meg! Yes? Finally made up your mind, have you? My mind? You run the pasta shop when I'm gone. Pasta? I'm glad to hear it, glad to hear it. You make your old man proud. When you kids left the house, I didn't know what to think. How am I supposed to keep this place running, an old man like me? Polly, your kids are home. Hello! Hello! Ugh. I have to be a parrot now. Uh-oh. Nick, what was that? A parrot, the one on the perch. Key! Yes? I think the wet noodle shop in your capable head. Nick, what's the wet noodle? Based on the av available evidence, I'd say the name of his pasta shop. That's a relief, isn't it, Polly? Hello! Hey, help! <laughs> a pasta shop? Huh? To think the wet noodle will live while I'm gone. My father started it, you know. And it makes two the, you two the third generation. Mick! Tomorrow we'll start the secret of dough tossing. Dough tossing? You too, Keith. <laughs> You'll be the best pasta wrangler the West has ever seen. Pasta wrangler? The West? Isn't pasta from Italy? Mick! Uh, yes? You know the best pasta's been made of the west of the Rockies, didn't you? Right, everybody knows that. Nick? How long do we have to keep this all in the family charade? He's gotta know something. We're not leaving till we find it out. Yeah. What are you talking about? This here's a balance of pasta and wet noodle. Well, now that you mention it, we haven't gotten many orders for spaghetti. All the kids come up and say, Yo, do you want to ride one of your boats? That's why I keep the boats out there. Youngsters these days, darned if I understand them. I'm pretty confused myself. Nick, this isn't going anywhere. But this old man's a witness. We gotta find some way to get information.
Wow, what an amazing parrot. Good morning. Hello? It ignored me. Why, you forgot. You gotta call her name first. Her name? Polly, how you been? Hello. Hey. Neat. So the parrot's name is Polly? Too bad that's all she can say is hello. <laughs> oh, she can say lots of things. You just need to know secret words. Secret words? Hmm. You're forgetting, Nick. He's running a pasta shop. Look, a little safe. It's locked. Hmm. Well, there's definitely something here, but... Oh. Hmm. Ah. A couple things I can do, I guess. Huh? Ah, is the lawyer's bed? Yes. I don't believe it. This old guy's the first person to recognize it. I get it. Uh huh? I got you figured out. Yeah, I'm not Keith. Nick? Uh, sir? I'm not Keith. And I'm not Meg. We're here investigating a murder that took place. Please help us. Yeah. A lawyer, huh? Please, mister. All right, I'll help. But on one condition. When this case is over and done, you'll need to run the wet noodle. Nick! Are you sure about this? Anything to get this case solved. Besides, who wouldn't want to eat Phoenix noodles? I guess so. That's my boy! Good for you, Keith. Didn't I just... You too, Meg! <laughs> you bring a tear to an old man's eye. What was it you want to know? Speak up, boy! Uh. I've seen this. Keep. It's okay. You can call me Dad. Dad? You know something about this? Another night out on the lake. I know all about that. I've seen it. Tell us what you saw. Well, I suppose. Since you're taking over the shop and all. Uh, I forget the time. It was pretty dark outside. Probably night. It was after midnight, but... I heard a bang! So I looked outside. Then I heard another one! Bang! A little while later, the boat comes back. And a young man walked by my window. He was muttering something to himself. Yeah. What do you say? Yeah. I forget. And I'll remember by tomorrow, I promise. You need to know now. My memory's gotten worse of late. That's why I just tell everything important to old Pa here. Everything important? I wonder. Polly, what's the number of the safe? 1228. All right. Hey, boy, watch it, will ya? In a criminal mind. Quick, Nick, write the number down. Don't get me involved. You know what? Little Terry was just here. Terry? Yeah, that kid next door. 
He always used to make him cry, remember? And he was wearing his tattered old coat. And he got some whiskers growing on his face. Must be talking about the detective gumshoe. He comes up and tells me to come down to court. My, uh, I think we should go. I think you're right. Oh, wait, I had one more question. Polly, have we forgotten something? Don't forget DL6. What the fuck? What did he just say? One more time, Polly. Don't forget DL6. DL6? Hey, I mean, Dad. That's weird. Who is this old guy? Why would that bird know about it? We gotta figure out who that old man is. He locked the door. Who could he be? I think I need to do a little more research. Maybe I should ask, ask Gumshoe. <laughs> I have that voice stuck in my head now. It's gonna be very weird going back to something else. Hey, pal! Long time no see. <laughs> you don't look happy. What's wrong this time? Get your foot caught in a boat somewhere? Actually, we wanted to ask you something. Yeah? You know that boat rental shop? Oh, yeah, him? The old man who runs is appearing as a witness tomorrow, isn't he? Uh, how'd you... I was supposed to be top secret. Do you know who that old man is? Actually, I don't. He's a bit of an odd guy. I haven't been able to get a straight answer up. I decided first he, was persuasive, he wasn't persuasive enough to testify. That's why we called Miss Lotta yesterday. As for who he is, we got no idea. It sounds suspicious. Well... Mm -hmm. Huh? We need to know about the DL6 incident. What? That was when Edgeworth's father died. I can't help but think it has something to do with this case. Yeah. To tell the truth, I don't know much about it either. Mr. Edgeworth forbade us from uh, reading the file. So I'm afraid I can't show them to you either. However... But you can convince me somehow that DL6 isn't related. Well, I guess I could consider opening it. that? Parrot? This old man at the boat shop's parrot. The parrot knew about the incident. The incident? He was six. What? Hmm. Pretty sure that old man must have taught her that word. Well, how would he know about it? Wait, what if... What if that old man's connected to it? You think he might be? Huh. Oh, I get you. Sounds like you need information. Through the there's the uh, station's records room. I'll give you special permission. Find what you need. All right, way to go, detective. Okay, Nick, let's go. I guess it's time. <coughs> Uh, it's, it's amazingly dusty. Ten years of files and ten years of dust, I guess. Let's find this DL6 stuff quick. Fifteen years ago. We were almost through fourth grade when it suddenly transferred. Because of DL6? Nick, I found it out! Oh, awesome! Just let me know what you wanted to know and all about the DL6 incident. See, a summary. Right. Found it. Here you go. 
December 28, 2001. Did it say 2001? Or am I... I mean, this could be set in the new timeline. I don't know. The case is closed. The incident took place in the elevator of the district courtroom. What? The same courtroom we're holding the trial now? Looks like it. There was a large earthquake at 2 p.m. that day. Part of the court building collapsed and all the lights went out. Oh, some earthquake. At the time, three people were trapped in the elevator. It took five hours for them to be rescued. Five hours? That would be scary like that in the dark. There was a lack of oxygen in the elevator and the survivors were unconscious. Survivors? One of the three had been shot in the heart. That was Mr. Edgeworth's father, wasn't it? He said that his father had been shot before his very eyes. So he was one of the other passengers. Do you have vic a data on Edgeworth's father? Uh, hold on. Victim, victim. Gregory Edgeworth, 35. If he were still alive, he'd be 50. He'd lost that day's case in court and got in the elevator. Miles? Oh, so he was in the elevator with his father? From the angle of the bullet and other evidence, it could not have been a suicide. The murder weapon was found in the elevator. The pistol had been fired twice. Where have I heard that before? That sounds just like the current case. What's going on here? Got any data on the suspect? No, that would be the guy my mom got arrested. No, this is it. The man arrested in the suspect was Yanni Yogi? He was a clerk in the court. So he must have been the third person in the elevator. Well, then he would have done it. But he was found innocent thanks to his defense lawyer. Damn it. The victim in our case. The suspect, Mr. Yogi, was oxygen deprived. So much so that he had brain damage. He lost all memory of being in the elevator. After he was declared innocent, he disappeared. Where could he have gone, I wonder? He may be closer than we think. I guess I know generally what happened. I still don't know what sort of impact this had on Edgeworth, but... Nick! Are we gonna take the whole file? That's a bit much, we'll never get it out! How about we just take what we think we'll need? Right. It's probably all we'll be able to find here. <sighs> now all that's left is a trial tomorrow. I wonder how Dad's going to testify in court. All right. Bam, 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 bam. Yes. So I'll see you guys next time as we begin day three. As dad takes the stand. <laughs> that should be fun.